and the Psalm 91. <clears throat> and it goes like this. for the ability to be here this morning to worship you. Lord, we ask that you would bless us here with your presence, that you would open our eyes to what refuge is and, and how we do that with you, what it means to understand your promises and, and use those uh, to build faith so, so as we find that, we, we can take refuge in you and you will allow you to guide us in all our ways. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <clears throat> For years, people suspected uh, something was gone, going on uh, in the exclusive resort of the Greenbrier Inn in West Virginia. Few knew the extent of what was actually happening. See, during the Eisenhower administration, while the Greenbrier was constructing a new wing, the U.S. government secretly was constructing an underground bunker that would house the House of Representatives and the Senate in case of catastrophic national emergency. Different aspects of the bunker were hidden in plain sight amid the amenities of the resort. The bunker included a commissary, 
clinic, a media production room, living quarters, and, and rooms for the congressmen to, to conduct the national business. A staff had to be there to make sure everything was ready in case the facility was needed. The cover story was that they were TV repairmen uh, for the Greenbrier. Likely story. <laughs> a few years ago, the bunker was decommissioned. And that was decommissioned after a press story leaked its, its existence and, and is now a tourist attraction. The massive facility was never used. Not even in the Cuban Missile Crisis, it was an unused refuge. We all know we can go to God in prayer, don't we? Yet many do not, for, for many prayer itself uh, is an unused refuge. Now, I didn't know till Wednesday night that Psalm 91 was actually uh, called the soldier's psalm, uh, or some call it the fa foxhole psalm. Uh, Jim Hillard uh, um, let me know that uh, on Wednesday during our, our, our midweek mid service. And I thought how appropriate that, that was, uh, that 91 would be called uh, the foxhole uh, psalm, because of that, that notion of refuge. Um, for soldiers, it would make sense uh, to hold on to, to something that, that talked about refuge because those folks knew what it meant to need to take refuge in those foxholes. I'm, I, I met with uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Mel Templeton yesterday, and hopefully he forgives me for doing this, but um, he and I were talking, and he served in World War II, and, and during uh, his time, he, he served over in England, uh, and it was t the time when um, the Nazis were, were bombing England, and, and he told him many nights he, he, was, he was spent in a, in, a, in a bunker, a foxhole, outside of, his, uh, outside of their barracks, and, and watched uh, as the planes would fight, and the, and the, the shrapnel would, and the, you know, the anti-aircraft trackers would go, and, it, and he said he'd never go to a, a, a fireworks again because he'd seen too much already. And so he really understood the, what it was to take refuge in that, in that bunker. Now, one of the things about refuge is, is one of those words that I thought, well, you know, there's probably different things that people could think that refuge means. So I looked, at, I looked up to, in the dictionary, as I, I like to do, actually, I looked online. I, um, but um, it says refuge. Uh, was, here we go, meant a shelter or protection from danger, trouble, etc. A place of shelter, protection, or safety, or anything to which one has recourse for aid, relief, or escape. And I think this that definition is what the psalmist is, is trying to tell us uh, about more today, about being on that threshold of, of finding relief, um, being able to come to that refuge um, and find protection. The psalmist tells us today where he takes uh, shelter. In verse 1 he says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. God is the one whom he will take refuge in. And this seems to be an important aspect of this conversation. Uh, because this conversation is be beginning between God and humanity. And we talked a little bit about that re relationship being a vertical relationship last week. And so here we see that again. He says... He's telling God, God, you are my refuge. He's declaring that to God. And that's an important aspect. The term refuge really holds very little power for us Western Christians, doesn't it? Um, This psalm is really important because it begins to explain uh, that it's a, the relationship between humanity and God. And that relationship is one of dependence. Uh, believers who are those who seek refuge 
or shelter or protection from God. They're not relying upon their own abilities or uh, their own uh, to be able to protect themselves. Jerome Kresh, he's a modern theolo theologian, the theologian, sorry, theologian. <laughs> It closely relates the concept of refuge to the concept of trust and confidence and reliance. Uh, in other words, to turn to God as a refuge is to seek protection, seek forgiveness, and seek blessing or, or seek hope in God. And it's also to trust in God, to have the faith that God will come through. This, after all, is what, much what faith is built on, isn't it? That ability to trust and that, to putting one's life in God's hands and, and struggling, uh, struggling to trust in and rely upon God. Maybe this will help us a little bit. Hit the video, will you? <laughs> are going really well and then we're asked to do something like I love the look on that guy's face let's do it you know do a t yeah it's like what do you, you want me to do what and then all of a sudden you know it, it starts to happen and and we have to let go don't we we have to be able to let go and trust trust that God will take back over and get us leveled back out and and so this idea of refuge uh, is huge if we let go. One of the things about refuge is that refuge isn't going to come to us, is it? I've never seen uh, anybody or anything say, uh, you know, they'll invite you, um, but they're not going to come to you and rescue you most often. And so, God says, come take refuge in me. But to, be, to take refuge, one has to be what? A refugee. Now, how many of us have good connotations or, or good understanding or, or a good thought of a refugee? No. We as, uh, uh, as Western Christians, what do we think of when we think of refugees? 
How about the Cuban boat people? I thought of those. Or we see the, the pictures on the, t on the TV, don't we? We see the, uh, about all these, these people that, that are, you know. But, and what are they? They have no home. They have nothing to their name. They're seeking shelter. They're seeking safety. They're seeking food. They're seeking just whatever they can squeak out. And, and they're not clean most of the time, are they? They're not well dressed most of the time, are they? They don't have a lot. Well, they have nothing. Thus, they're a refugee seeking protection. Now, how many of us can see ourselves as a refugee? I mean, what do we got? We, most of us have a shelter over our head today. Most of us had breakfast or chose not to have it before we came this morning. Um, we have, you know, a car in the driveway or a way to get around. We've got shoes on our feet. We're, we're, you know, we're bathed or we choose not to bathe. We're clean. We're not, but so it's hard for us to think of ourselves as a refugee, isn't it? But truly we are a refugee. Because anything that we hold on to, anything that we say is ours, really isn't ours, is it? It's given to us by God to be stewards of. God has blessed us tremendously. But still we have to be a refugee. We have to be able to put away all that other stuff that we put our dependent upon. And as we chase after those idols, we need to put them aside and lift up Jesus as the one that's in charge, the one that's flying our plane, the one, the one that's focused in on our picture. Mary was, Mary Hillard brought up a really good point on, on uh, Wednesday night. She goes, you know, refugees are, are, not, are often, you know, unkempt and unclean and, and you know, Aren't we really the same as a refugee? Are we really, we're made clean by Jesus? And Jesus invites us and says, come, let me be your refuge. Let me give you what you need. Let me, let me fulfill you. Let me clean you up. You don't have to do it by yourself. Come, take refuge in me, and we'll work it all out. And then we come to God's promise. God's promise is to be in relationship with humanity. When we think of refuge, we often think of physical uh, need because you know that's the safety that we, we think we need at the moment and and but the, the the refuge that God offers is far greater than just mere physical safety our psalmist says because you made the Lord your refuge these promises are for you promises such as no evil will befall you or God will command the angels to guard you or those who love me, I will deliver when they, when they call on me, I will answer. These kind of promises are, are made in this psalm. And the soldiers in, in foxholes, they held on to this, this psalm because, why? They were in harm's way, weren't they? And they were fearful for their lives and, and they were holding on to this promise that God would keep them safe. But how many of those soldiers that were holding on to Psalm 91 died in those foxholes. So does that make the promise of Psalm 91 untrue? Does it make it a lie? One of the things that we need to be careful of as we read the Old Testament and the, and the promises there is that we have to read them in context. Psalm 91 was probably uh, spoken um, by a priestly figure to a, a one individual. And so he was offering the promise of God to that one individual. But from this, we can take the promise of God to be with us.
God is good for the promises. His promises like, I will be with you in the storm. I will hold you when times are bad. Uh, but oftentimes we want to hear what we want to hear, don't we? And oftentimes we as preachers make the mistake of saying, um, you know, if you, if you give everything you got, if you give your best to God, then, you know, you, health, wealth, and, and security and success is yours. That is not necessarily the case. Ask any of the, the third, third world refugees that are Christian, what's their promise? Their promise is a better life in eternity, a life guaranteed by Christ if they will call upon the Lord. And, and so there's where we find our promise. Not so much that we're going to drive big cars or have fancy houses or, or you know, eat at the, you know, this banquet every night, but the promise is that God will be with us when we take ourselves and offer ourselves up and seek refuge in Christ Jesus. A song that says, uh, talks about refuge, uh, about and some of God's promises um, to be a healer, uh, to be a lover deeper than the sea. Mercy is a promise of God um, and he will be our fortress if we'll only trust in him uh, as we go forward. So this is I Lift My Hands by Chris Tomlin. Be still there is a healer his love is deeper than the sea His mercy is unfailing His arms are fortress for the weak Let faith arise Let faith arise I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength as I pour out my heart these things I remember You are a faithful God forever Be still, there is a river That flows from Calvary's tree a fountain for the thirsty Your grace that washes over me Let faith arise Let faith arise I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart these things I remember You are a faithful God forever let faith arise, let faith arise, open my eyes, open my eyes, let faith arise, let faith arise, open my eyes, let faith arise, I lift my hands to beneath. Again, you are my refuge, you are my strength. As I pour out my heart, these things I remember. You are a faithful God forever. Let faith arise, let faith arise. Open my eyes, open my eyes. Let faith arise. We're on a threshold. Threshold goes two ways, in and out. God, through Jesus Christ, is, is waiting on the other side of that doorway to be our refuge, to be our stronghold, to be that bomb shelter, if you will. But we have to go and step over that threshold. We have to have the faith to give God control through Jesus Christ and step through that threshold 
and into that safety zone where Jesus awaits. That's where faith comes in. The faith to trust in the promises that God gives us. And God is always, always faithful. So let faith arise in your heart to take refuge in the one who can protect us from all things. Amen.